So we're uh, we're with a uh, a vehicle that CHP or correction the sheriffs were in pursuit of. He's right in front of us there, in the right. Uh, actually, he's right. I'm gonna move over. He's right in front of us. There's two vehicles that it might be. I see the Camaro, and then there's a vehicle in front of us that might be it. I haven't heard a vehicle description yet. It's one of those two. Sheriffs backed out, and they're waiting on CHP to get in it. Um, they requested Central CHP. I don't see. Central CHP. Oh no, I think he might be over there. There we go. Sweet. All right. Number one. So he moved over to the number one. So it's that white. Uh... All right, I got CHP with me. I'm trying to figure out which car it is. I'm assuming they're going to ask for a vehicle uh, description. Alright, CHP is lighting them up. We're southbound 110 at Slauson. 455 is going to be with it. Alright, and we got... Uh, Alright, so we're with the pursuit right now. Um, we don't really have anybody... We don't really have anybody south of us. Um, CHP is going to get more units involved. It was failure to yield out of West Hollywood. This started at La Brea and uh, Romaine, I believe. The uh, sheriffs stopped this vehicle about 15 minutes ago. I'm gonna put it at, uh, uh, let's do like 11.50. Let's do that for time of call. Um, but we're with this uh, we're with this suspect vehicle. We don't know what the original want was. All I know is that they've been abiding by um, the uh, road rules, so they've been doing the speed limit. You can see we're doing 70 miles an hour right now. They got CHP right behind them. Um, yeah, 60 miles an hour, traffic's light, we got cars all around us right now. And this guy is, uh, the sheriffs took him into downtown and then uh, Airship asked them to re-engage because they were going near all the buildings and everything. Airship said, nope, knock it off. And um, they went into surveillance mode and that's exactly what we have uh, going on here. So we're behind it, we're gonna be the only ones with it. I'm gonna ask uh, Keith to move down uh, for coverage and then we're gonna stay with this until, probably until the conclusion because we're, <laughs> We're the only ones down here, so here we are. I got another one coming up on your right. And they're working on a spike on the 105 freeway, so. Yeah, I copy that. Spike at the 105, and I've got five CHP units uh, with it, and we are, looks like, moving moving over a little bit. We're, uh, I think, in the number three lane. They're going to spike them too, Tay, so just to... All right, we're going to be committed southbound 110. No, uh, no, no spike for us. 455, staying with it southbound 110 under the 105. All right, so it sounds like, uh, I'm not sure if it's Central or South LA CHP that's staying in it or getting out. Uh, it sounds like there's units backing out right now. There we go. We got uh, South LA is taking it over. We just switched frequencies and look, we got units all over. One right there. These are two units out of, uh, out of Central, I believe. And then we've got units uh, south of us out of South LA. And I believe that unit in the uh, HOV lane is going to be South LA as well. So he'll turn his lights on here in a second. And they're out of it. We're Again, we're going to stay in it. And because the speeds are so low, um, I don't think they're going to put too many guys on it. I, I would assume three. Uh, at the at the most, we have two right now that are handling. That looks like a third jumping on. We got units coming up behind us like crazy right now. And it sounds like they did get a spike, possibly. It sounds like they did get a uh, they did get a uh, spike. I think a tire just disintegrated. Yeah, it looks like he just disintegrated. Uh, yeah. Hey, we just had a tire disintegrate. Just a heads up, it's going to be between the uh, the slow lane and the uh, 
and the, the four lane. So just, just be careful when you're coming down, you got a tire in lanes there. Oh, his lights are on. Hey, just watch out, we're losing tire. I'll be taking my number one. Yeah, we got a full tire in the slope. All right, copy that. Catch up to me and, uh, and take it. Yeah, 45 up on Simplex. Um, yeah, 41. What's the what's the one on this guy? I know it was there was something up with the vehicle, but what's uh, what's up with it? I only caught the arrow request on that. Okay, copy that. Um, looks like he's losing a tire. 91's open up here. Let me know when you're through the trans. Okay, copy that. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna break off of this. Then I'll leave it with you. Uh, make your way up here, and there's two uh, two units with their lights off, hiding, uh, just getting ready to run a break. I think we're gonna bust out of here and leave it with. Uh, I think we're gonna break out and leave it with uh, with Nathan. I think is what we're gonna what we're gonna do. Yeah, because you could take us. Hey, 41, take that right lane. Take that right lane that's opening up here. There's uh, for Central. There's an exit only lane. Take that. It's open. Take it. Take it. Take it. So let's get Nathan in it, and then yeah, I don't want to get stuck in this. We got a fire in East LA happening, so this could go forever. <laughs> so it's heading back into his area. And 41, I'm going to leave it with you. I'm off at Central. I'm on the uh, on the overcrossing here. Um, it's all you. It's probably it's probably a DUI driver. Um, I don't want to get stuck. On, on this whole thing. Yeah, there's tire tread on the freeway too. It's a mess. Are you coming up to Central, I assume, or where are you at? I just want to make sure he's in it and he's got it, and then I'll explain. Yeah, he's right. So Nathan's right here. He's going down. Okay, copy. You got passing. It's all you, brother. 45 is going to be clear. I'll be switching back to base. You can switch back to base as well. Note for uh, coordination if you want to grab 331. He's missing a tire. Uh, whole tires in the roadway. And again, 45 is clear. Great work on that passing. So Nathan got passing over there on the 110 at like... Uh, I don't know what, what exit that was. It was like, what, El Segundo? It was just south of the... Uh, yeah, he was, he was just on the exit for El Segundo. Nathan got a passing shot. So, 45's back on base along with 41. 41's going to be taking over the pursuit. 45's going to be clearing back into uh, downtown. And uh, 331, do you have a location for that, uh, for that uh, structure in East LA? So... The, um, we dropped into that just because um, it came out of West Hollywood. Oh. Adam Lincoln, Adam, Mary, Adam? <laughs> I don't think I copied that right. <laughs> Major cross street will be uh, Whittier Boulevard. Oh, Whittier, okay. Indiana Street. Okay, Whittier in Indiana, I copy. And uh, help me out on a size up because I'm kind of south right now. So, um, the... The thought, and we're now back. Um, we're now back uh, eastbound, or sorry, westbound, 91, and we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna jump on the 110 and head back, head back into downtown. So, the reason we jumped in on this is because, um, is because the suspect um, came out of West Hollywood, came down the 101. We were already on another call. Um, I can't remember now. What were we doing? Oh, that's right. We had a hit and run. Um, that wasn't a hit and run, Tay's right. Um, so we, we ended up, we were going to that, the pursuit comes out, the guy's not speeding, he's not doing anything really outside of having a want. So I was like, you know, 
Uh, it doesn't really sound too crazy. We're just gonna kind of, you know, listen to it, see if we can get in the area. We tried for a passing. He went one ton, went one ton. Probably not a ton, probably less than that. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we went 110, um, uh, he went 110 southbound. We went, uh, we were on the 101 just before the connector road. He went southbound. We stayed with it until um, until Nathan could get into position. He hauled butt across the 105, I'm assuming, and took the 110 south and got in position for a passing shot. So Nathan got the passing shot. Um, I don't wanna leave you guys hanging. So I don't know how this ends. Uh, I'm assuming with the guy going to jail, he's missing a tire and he's going 60 miles an hour on the freeway with like 50 CHP units. So he's probably not going very far, but um, let's do this. Uh, Alex, our incredible uh, producer, director, editor extraordinaire, if you could roll uh, Nathan's passing shot and let's see the uh, conclusion of that pursuit. So as you can see in the video, good spike. Uh, that tire disintegrated. Nathan got the conclusion of that. Our fire out of East LA. Three, three, oh. one, four, nine, nine, you copy. Uh, 455 copies out of East LA. Um, outside fire only, I'm canceling, thank you. Northbound 110, coming up to the 105. So um, yeah, so Nathan got the termination, which is great, because that's, that's his job. We hand it over, he's more than qualified. Um, and he's, uh, he's actually really good at pursuit. So um, really, really good footage on that. And uh, yeah, we're back available. We had a fire out of East LA. That is nothing. That was an outside fire only. What, what is an outside fire? Okay, so an outside fire uh, is literally just that. It's, an outs it's a fire that's outside of a structure, um, either a house or a commercial building. Um, outside fires, even though we're a little bit dismissive of them in the past, lately, they've been a little bit more um, serious. And the reason, the reason for that, to, to elaborate, um, the reason for that is because there's been a lot of, uh, as you know, in California, we have, I think, half of the United States homeless population here, and their tents catch on fire, especially in the winter. They have little warming fires. They are, um, they pass out, they fall asleep, they leave the fires unattended. Fire uh, makes the uh, tent catch on fire. And, uh, and then if it's close enough to a building, it'll go up under the eaves, you know, that hang over on the sides. If, it, if it's a, you know, a, a cinder block or concrete or brick wall, and there's no uh, air vents or anything or, or a roll up door, um, chances are you've got some good protection into that structure from a situation like that, from those eventualities. But um, most of the time, it's not a big deal, but we've been seeing more and more now. Um, and I think Alex uh, sees it uh, more than anybody. We have fires all the time that are caused by an outside fire, either a, a large rubbish, like a pile of trash, or a tent, like a homeless encampment, or whatnot. And those tent fires and those trash fires generate a lot of heat. Um, those tents and all their belongings are very aerated. So you have the tent. Um, oh, that guy's flying. It's always a Tesla now. What's up with that? That Tesla is boogie boogie and um, heavy on the brakes there, my goodness. Um, that guy was doing 110, 115. So, um, you know, there's uh, a lot of air inside that tent, obviously. And when you mix uh, air and fuel, which the nylon and the, uh, the materials, uh, the canvases that the tents are made out of, they always have tarps and sometimes there's accelerants in there. There could be butane, uh, little kerosene lighters, propane, stuff like that. Um, all of that burns really quickly. And, and more often than not, in a lot of these rubbish piles and uh, homeless uh, tents, you see piles of uh, wood 
and other flammable uh, products. So if they go to sleep and they have a small fire in like a little trash can or what have you, like a steel trash can, um, that fire can get out of control or somebody can come over and just, you know, knock it over. That outside fire, like we were talking about on this dispatch just now, that outside fire being up against a commercial building is now like, that's a big deal. So uh, every once in a while, and again, like I said, and I, I hate to reiterate this, but it's, it's becoming a bigger issue uh, for the city as a whole is that is, and we're seeing the, these fires normally which would have been just a, a small rubbish fire a trash can or whatever now they're this big homeless encampment with all the trash and all the flammables that are just cooking off and all that heat is getting directed especially with the awning that overhangs the end of the the end of the building right you've got that hanging over um, all that heat is going up into that into that awning and uh, it's it's circulating into the attic space or if it's a two-story into the floor space and that then gets into the walls and if it's a roll-up door it can get into product we have a lot of textile uh, manufacturing buildings down here our businesses i should say and um, when that fire is next to a roll-up door and you've got a stack and pallets and pallets and pallets of textiles then you end up with a fire uh, a textile fire which usually goes through the roof it's a massive thing and i think we we had a couple of those alex if you could roll back the textile fire where we had the smoke pressurized smoke in the building and i said hey we got to watch out for that if you could just roll a clip off of that really quick blow out soon. Hey, heads up, heads up. This is gonna flash back. We gotta go out. Once it, once it flashes over, once we get active flame out of that door, then we can go back in there. But until, until we have active flame, that can flash over really easily. Watch out for the embers up here and the power lines. Alex doing all the uh, all the the heavy work while we're looking for a, a call right now. He's doing uh, doing memory lane playbacks, which I appreciate very much, Alex. Thank you. Um, so, and Alex hates the fires. We we had a, a a couple months there with Alex where all we were doing was going to fires. It was like fire after fire after fire. So I think he's I think Alex has seen enough fire for a lifetime. So um, Tay is not uh, worn out on the fires yet. So uh, we, so she still gets excited. Alex, I don't think in in. Alex has been doing it. He was filming Code 2 Zero for about seven years, and uh, I, I don't think Alex wants to see another commercial fire. But um, you know, <laughs> that's just my that's just my guess. But beautiful view into downtown. We're back uh, northbound 110, getting back into our uh, our area in downtown Los Angeles. Let me get the uh, laptop out of the way here, so Tay can show you. And actually, we're coming up to, and I think I've mentioned it before, one of my favorite views of LA. Um, right here, northbound 110, uh, just past Exposition, uh, between Expo and Adams, as we're, we're gonna make this sweeping uh, right turn and, and we're gonna merge with traffic back from the elevated portion, which is the uh, fast track or HOV section. And there's this sweeping right turn and you can see um, you can see the elevation drops a little bit. Oh, this taxi is gonna to try to ruin our view here. And uh, you can see as we come over this little, little crest, there's a tiny elevation change. And my goodness, look at that. One of my all time favorite views of downtown. And I wish there was a spot right here where you could stop and sit and enjoy it. But not so lucky we then drop down into the belly, the underbelly of downtown LA. So we're back, uh, back heading toward the four level. And uh, I'm gonna, make a prediction and say well I don't know I don't know let's see we could either be going to another call or this could be the end of the episode but I have a feeling because the night is young everyone pray to uh, Alex our overlord our edit editorial overlord and pray to Alex and say Alex please another scene please let's go let's go to another call and I'm finding out with you guys here we go
waters like this are super, super dangerous. People, uh, watch how we got water coming out. Um, it's really difficult to get out of apartments. You can see the bars on the windows too. They've got bars on the first floor on all the windows. So not always, uh, not always an easy place to uh, escape out of, so. got Keith listening to the uh, attack channel so we'll see if we have any victims or anything like that but as of right now just just heavy smoke and then they're gonna check for extensions into the second floor like this are always really really dangerous uh, for the people living inside of these buildings um, so excuse me so when you have firefighters working as quickly as these guys do to get in and get a knockdown and try to get people out of here we're not sure if everybody made it out we're gonna talk to uh, some of the people here um, we also have uh, like I said earlier Keith's monitoring on comms we got a little bit of fire still showing on the top of the windowsill still got resources showing up. When they got here, uh, the first in, I think it was 52, they said, hey, we've got heavy fire showing out of the first floor on a, uh, that's cool too, they're dragging the, uh, dragging the supply line down the street, it's kinda neat. They said, hey, we've got, let's move over here just so we can see what's going on. They said, uh, they said hey, we've got heavy fire showing from a two-story center hall apartment. Um, and they, I think they asked for two additional uh, uh, companies on this so again I'm hoping everybody made it out we still have some fire on the on the window over here I'm not sure what's going on with that but uh they're gonna be uh, in the hallway going upstairs and in the uh, first floor as well so we'll see uh, see if anybody if they bring anybody out but I it, it looked like there was a bunch of people already outside I'm hoping that the people that live in there made it out okay Occupants out and accounted for. That's what I heard, uh, but I'm heading uh, 1019. All right, copy that. 1019-45 uh, is going to be 10-8 and clear off of the, uh, or 10-8 at scene at the fire at uh, Oxford and Romain.
So uh, Keith just confirmed everybody's out. So we uh, again had a two-story apartment building fire, fire, heavy fire, I would say, on the first floor. Um, they said all residents made it out, so good for them. Again, uh, the bars on the windows, I see every building around here, actually every single one that I can see has, uh, has very substantial bars on the windows. If you're gonna have bars on the windows uh, as a crime deterrent, um, it makes sense, but there, I don't know if there's a way uh, to get them off quickly. I would assume that there's some type of mechanism somebody sells somewhere where you can pull a lever from the inside and jettison the, uh, the bars. That would, be, um, that would be a good thing. So, all right, we're, uh, we're done with this fire here in Hollywood and uh, we're parked in a good spot. We didn't get stuck, so we're out of here. I assume you want me to respond from the west uh, to the east, correct? All right, we're gonna go down this little squirrely, little squiggly street here. Yeah, if you see my car, just uh, walk west, and I'm next to uh, Battalion and Command. Uh, RAs are over here also. Okay, copy that. I'll be code six with you in uh, seconds. So we're uh, we're rolling in on a sounds like a huge fire, uh, residential fire that Keith uh, that Keith had. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what the cause was. I don't know. Where did he park? I think that's him. Right is that his car? Oh, it is. It is his car. You're right, Tay. Very good. And my steering wheel is making a weird little. Oh, of course now it doesn't do it. I go. The steering wheel is making a weird noise. Oh, there it is. Do you hear it? It's like a weird little little noise in the U joint. Ooh in the universal joint. So we'll uh, we'll go in there and I'm gonna have to fix that later. So um, what we have right now, and there's, it's gonna be loud out here. We have fire trucks, news helicopters, the whole nine. So I'll grab my camera just in case. Um, but Keith was saying that it was a, not a wind driven fire, but a propane driven fire. Um, not sure what it was, if it was a gas leak or a house um, uh, blew up from a gas leak or something, but it, it sounds really serious. We're gonna go over, take a look and then um, talk to Keith and see what he's got. it's working remote's been acting up I don't know what's going on it's that time of uh, that time of year I guess oh by the way Tay uh, when you're done with the news helicopter <laughs> we got a fire extinguisher I'm very happy we had one in the uh, Crown Vic for many a year and when we got the Taurus I didn't really have a place to mount it and then I thought you know I think right there's a good spot so we put it in we had a uh, homeless guy that was on fire that we rolled up on uh, a while ago. I don't know if it will have aired by the time this comes out, but um, I don't want to ever feel that way again where we've got a guy on fire and I can't put him out. So we're not going to use it often, hopefully, but uh, it is there, which is a good thing. All right. So they are, oh, I see they're transporting right now. <sighs> 499, did you get transport or no? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm walking down to you. I'm assuming the house is that way. Randy. <laughs> Copy that. Uh, location.
it's an apartment complex. Just grab one of these. So we're here at a, uh, uh, a big fire. We were kind of listening to it. And it's funny because we, uh, we were at quarters and we yeah. saw everybody in, and the whole city was basically coming up here. What, what did you guys have when you got here? Uh, well, I was just leaving my house and I was about to get on the freeway the opposite way. And this car came out. So I put the GPS real quick. And I'm like, well, I better get on that side of the freeway. Right. Because uh, we're north of the yeah, valley. We're, we're in Sunland. Yeah, we're west yeah. of it. And this is east of, of right. where I staged. Right. So heading down they said they got a uh, house with fire showing with propane tanks exploding so gotcha. I, I was like oh it's gonna be a good fire right so get here uh, when I pull up on scene they're transporting one person and uh, flames like 40 feet high holy cow okay so house fully involved like crazy uh, stuff garage fully involved got like, it propane tanks in the garage yeah it was inside the garage it wasn't like a detached garage so it was attached the house. attached yeah. garage okay uh, no uh, no like RVs going or anything uh, just no. Car was going. Car. Okay. Yeah. So you had a car, the garage, propane tanks, and a person transported. Were they like yeah. serious or? Burn victim. Okay. So, Light burns, third degree. What do we? Uh, like inside the face. Gotcha. Uh, but they were conscious and breathing. Yeah, conscious breathing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So um, we're here. We got here late. Keith didn't though. Uh, we're gonna go to the tape. Alex, if you could, let's see what uh, Keith saw when he arrived here in Sunland. So just uh, after 9.15 uh, this evening, the Los Angeles City Fire Department responded to a reported structure fire at the 10,000 blocks of Sherman Grove Avenue here in the community of Sunland. Now, and upon arrival, firefighters found a one-story single-family dwelling with a part of the garage fully involved in flames. Firefighters started an aggressive fire attack and were pushed back because of the intense heat, but immediately started to make their, their way inside to be able to start knocking down the flames. At this point, we did have three uh, civilians on scene that were uh, uh, that were treated by paramedics, with one adult male and a child, approximately 16-year-old male, that were both transported by paramedics to a local hospital. And then we had an adult female, approximately 20 year old, that was uh, treated and uh, released here on scene. Now this is a complex incident because the fact when we arrived on scene, we, we did exhibit signs that there was a possibility or potential of an explosion or, or there was an explosion at some point. Because of that, we took a step back. We were able to knock down those flames. But now our partnering agencies, such as the LAPD and the LAPD Hazmat and, and Bomb Squad, will be on scene to conduct a thorough investigation. So at this point, we've got news choppers overhead. You're here at the command post and waiting on sound, right? Yeah, I okay. called the stations. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> Everything's we were set. looking for this. You know, <laughs> the, the choppers didn't get ahead right. overhead by the time that the fire was out. Cool. So, so they're happy. Yeah, I got everything that they need. That's and, all uh, I wanted to hear. Very good. Now you can go back to uh, I can go back. Metro I can go back downtown. I love this, by the way. Keith's got the the shotgun mic with the... Is this the mic that's normally on the camera, or is this a different uh, microphone? No, my wireless <laughs> mic is not charged. Why is it so long? Why is it, so, why is it like this? The longer the better. It's not about the size of the microphone. It's about the uh, quality of the, uh, the audio, right? That's very good. I like that. All right. So Keith's got this handled. That looks so precarious. I hope that doesn't fall. Um, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna be heading back downtown. Keith's pretty much got it. Um, again, incredibly uh, good at the job. These guys are fast as heck. So the fact that Keith was able to get up here and get any flames at all is uh, is is pretty incredible. So hopefully the person that was injured is okay. And now we're gonna head downtown and get our own story because uh, Keith's got the valley covered. We don't have to do anything. He's got it. Sounds like I already have uh, two patients 
uh, Franklin IC 455 is uh, two minutes out, and I'll be uh, extended 499 if you want to do uh, move ups for me. All right, so we are heading in on a uh, apartment fire right now with a unit fully involved on the second floor. We've got reports of multiple. Uh, we have reports of multiple victims coming out already. Um, they don't have a knockdown yet. No exposures. All right, but we do have. We do have uh, a good going, good going fire. Um, we'll see if we can get there in time for flames. Usually, city is extremely, extremely aggressive when it comes to uh, fire attack on apartment buildings. Um, so we're going to try our our best to get in there. But it does sound like we have uh, smoke inhalation victims at the minimum, and uh, there's reports of people trapped. So that's where we're uh, that's where we're headed. We're northbound 101 coming into Hollywood, and we're going to be getting off here in like two seconds. So. Division 2, I copy. It looks like it's the unit on the Alpha Bravo corner on the top floor. Okay, we're going to go with the. Uh, we're going to go with the. I don't know where that BMW was going. Really hard to find a uh, spot on this one, huh? Yeah, do you want to go up in the cleaners? There we go, check that out. Yeah. We're going to back over to it. We still got some uh, fire on the second floor. Space. We've still got fire in the attic, it looks like, uh, just minimal fire. Um, they're saying that there's two uh, possible uh, victims of smoke inhalation over here out in the front of the building. I can see that uh, the medical component group is working with those victims right now and they're going to be getting them uh, They're going to be getting them out of here as, as quickly as they can. However, um, what we're looking at right now is pretty, uh, pretty substantial, so I'm hoping everybody made it out of that unit. I'm not sure uh, what just happened there, but we did have an explosion. We got uh, very, very pressurized, uh, very pressurized smoke turning into fire here, coming out of the second, uh, out of the attic. And today we have a victim being uh, transported here right now. Just looking at the, uh, just looking at the condition right now. I, did you hear that? There's a gas line. So uh, Steve's saying there's a possible gas line explosion. Um, we've got rolling uh, smoke and uh, what looks like some serious combustibles in that attic space above that second floor, and we're seeing really, really pressurized uh, flames and smoke coming out of that floor right now. So. Um, we've got one victim just transported. We got another one getting evaluated uh, right now. But um, this, the, the attic space on this looks uh, very, very pressurized. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if they can get in there and find it. But it, it looks like we might get fire out the side here. 
on the left side and then fire through the roof on the holes they've already cut. So let's see. Uh, we've got a, a, a knockdown on the bulk of the planes as of right now. behind the ball on this one, not too happy about it. LA City Fire's cutting the roof apart. They're getting into the seat of the fire in the attic. Um, we're gonna clear off and get this in. Again, we did get okay flames because it got in the attic and it started rolling around and it punched through a hole that they had cut. Um, so good ventilation on City's part, of course, as always. Um, again, we're, we're a little behind the ball. I would have liked to have been a little bit, uh, a little bit sooner on this, but um, we were tied up on other things, and I can't be everywhere at the same time. My remote is now working for some reason, not sure why. Um, but we got, again, we got uh, two victims transported, one in serious, I would say, critical condition. Hopefully they're okay. I don't know if there's a victim in that unit, in the fire unit. We have no clue right now. So this could very well be a fatal fire, and we have no idea. So uh, we'll get a little bit more information. Let me check in. Actually, you know what? Let me check in with Keith. 499, 455. Can I get primaries and secondaries on my fire if you got it? So let's find out. Let's see what Keith says if it's a, if it's a fatal or not. Uh, I think three transported, one critical, two three transported. minors. Uh, and the bottom is vacant. Got it. Um, bottom unit vacant. And top floor is uh, here also, I think. All right, copy that. I appreciate the heads up. Thank you. So uh, they did primaries and secondaries. Keith's saying that we've got three victims transported. We saw, uh, we saw the two, um, and then uh, I, I'm assuming the woman uh, that there was two women. I think uh, it was the the older woman and the younger woman. They probably went together in the same ambulance, and then we had the one that we saw that was in really bad shape. That's our that's our critical, um, and then the two minor. Obviously, I would assume that's the females. Um, again, I. Uh, they're saying, Keith's saying that they did primary and secondary. The first floor is vacant, is what I'm hearing. Um, but again, we always get more information the following day. So we're going to get this in. And uh, we've been all over tonight. We're over in Beverly Hills. We went to something over there, which was actually really boring. So this is the uh, most excitement we've had tonight. Um, let, me swap, uh, let me swap cards out. And then uh, let's feed and get on out of here. Oh, big earthquake. Big earthquake. I'll be standing by for it here in Ventura. I'm driving, probably not going to feel it. I'm rolling up on this uh, on this fire here on 41st, but uh, thanks for the heads up. We'll be in earthquake mode, I'm sure. Oh, big earthquake. We just, guys, we just had, everybody's car is shaking. We just had a big uh, earthquake, they're saying. A lot of smoke here, check it out. Too. All right. All right, and we're here. Awesome. So we just had an earthquake and we're rolling up to a fire. So, 30, 41st Street. Let's see where the battalion ends up, and then we're gonna find a spot. Where's he going? Are you moving? No, you're gonna stay there. Oh wow! Yeah, it's going. All right. 
well established, well established attic fire. That would be uh, the understatement of the year. <laughs> oh yeah, we just had a uh, we just had an, a uh, earthquake. And we're gonna ask. Uh, we'll ask the cops over here if they if they felt it. Because we were we were driving. Obviously, we didn't. We're not gonna feel it. But uh, yeah, we just have an attic fire. I'm not sure if we have any uh, any victims, but we'll find out. Look at this, Tay. It's going. I'm getting worried it was a 4.2 uh, just south of Malibu, so not sure if we if we'd feel it here. already actually collapsed on the side. I'm not sure if this is uh, occupied uh, home or a vacant. We'll, we'll find out. I put it out first. It felt like somebody was jumping on my car. <laughs> Randy said someone said it felt like someone was jumping on his car. So yeah, earthquake with, with this going on, the timing is just crazy. And again, we were driving when it happened, so we wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't feel it. <laughs> great time to kind of point out fire dynamics if you want to show what's going on here. So you can see the front half of the attic, we have well-established fire, and it's actually jumped into the eave, it looks like, on the uh, second level of the attic. And if you look at the far left side, we can see that we've got really black pressurized smoke, and you can see where that flame just started shooting out on the left side. That's the fire in the attic looking for air and following that trail of unburnt fuel. So um, very, uh, very easy to see here how how the fire dynamic uh, works in, in an attic space like this where the fire is going to try to find the, the quickest path to, to breathe. Hey Sarge. Hi. Hey, good to see you. Oh, you too. <laughs> yeah, been so good long. to see you. You guys uh, found it, I, I heard. Yeah, one of that nice that's awesome they, i don't know why fd had it as just a rubbish fire and you guys go it's a house on fire and then i show up and i go oh it is a house on fire right gotcha right right yeah they were they were kind of chill about it and then i guess they figured out where it actually was and they went oh shit the cops are right <laughs> so uh, did you guys feel an earthquake by the way no but you didn't feel it text me okay what happened. i didn't feel it was up we, yeah, it's in Malibu, four point something. My guy in Pomona felt it, and we were driving here, so we didn't feel anything. But I, I was wondering if you guys felt it, but if you didn't feel it, then, hey, that's good for us then. <laughs> All right, so we're just wrapping up. Um, we had another uh, house fire, LAPD. Come on. I need to get the new remote. I'm locked out of my trunk, man. Come on. Huh? Hey, there we go. So, um, yeah, we'll get that swapped out because that's probably not a good thing. Um, so, uh, this is our third 
Uh, technically our second uh, uh, company-wide for Key News. Uh, this is our third fire of the night. Keith's fire kind of kicked everything off into high gear. Um, with his, with the, uh, with them requesting Bomb Squad out there, which is like, that's some next level stuff. Um, we then had the Hollywood fire, we were a little late on, but we got some, uh, we got some decent stuff on that. Um, we had a victim there. This one, uh, LAPD actually located it, um, requested LAFD to come out. LAFD got here, they upgraded it to a full on structure fire. They had a well, uh, well developed attic fire. And, uh, being as aggressive as they are, they were able to get knocked down pretty damn quick. You know, it, it's kind of interesting because you lose track of time when you're out here. You think, oh, that didn't take that long. And then you look at the clock and you go, oh, it did. That, that, that was like a half hour. Oh, my goodness. So um, we'll check the actual knockdown time. LAFD thankfully sends out uh, notification emails um, letting us know what's, uh, what's going on and all the updates from the incidents that have occurred. This is going to drive me insane. The trunk not working is going to drive me nuts. So that's pretty much it. Um, LAPD was great on this. They were super chill. That's always what we like to see. Just, hey, film your stuff and <laughs> move on out. Go to the next one. So um, we're done here at the fire. Uh, tonight's been crazy. It's been like the night of fires, as Tay said. She already coined it. The night of fires. All right, so, um, sorry, we've got a lot going on. Um, we're just leaving this house fire. I'm hearing, as we got in the car, I'm hearing LAPD responding to a backup request at, let me see if I can figure this out here, at Beacon, oh boy, hang on, we got cars doing silly things. At Beacon and 11th uh, for an LAFD, for an LAFD backup with uh, LAFD not responding to radio requests, um, they are, it sounds like they were on a medical call. It sounds like they were on a medical call and there was a shooting at the call that they were at. They're in an apartment. There's reports of shots fired in the area. Officers are responding. Officers are responding to that location from Rampart Division. And wow, look at the smoke from the fire we just left. Looks like a damn oh, cloud. You all right? You rolling over there? Oh, God. Sorry, Tater. So, um, LAPD, it sounds like the airship is overhead and there's officers responding code three from the station. So we're hauling butt that direction. You see the airship right there in front of us. We're not too far away. It's Rampart Division, which is just west of the 110. Uh, it's gonna be near like 8th Street, I think. If I'm correct, I, mean, I gotta check the map here in a second. But um, yeah, this is not a not a good situation. And we're, uh, we're gonna head over there, uh, make sure that we're in a, in a good spot, uh, out of harm's way, and we're gonna find out exactly find out exactly what's going on but this does not sound like this does not sound like a good uh, situation by any means and I want to make sure that we're um, I want to make sure that we're in the in the correct spot to uh, to cover this so that's the way of right now also a little note we are in earthquake mode um, we just had again it's a 4.1 earthquake just south of Malibu is what the guys are reporting. I was hearing them talking on our radio system um, while we were out at the fire. So four point, four point something. You know, they always uh, they always lower the number, or raise the number a little bit. Um, so we'll, by the time this comes out, I'm sure there'll be again more information on it. We're we're in the moment as this is happening, and there's not always a ton of info uh, while things are going down. So airship's right overhead. He's got a high orbit. Um, trying to keep a good uh, bird's eye view on everything as best he can. We're jumping off here at 8th, which is going to be our best uh, our best access. And we're going to kind of double back over to this location, which again is uh, 11th Street and Beacon. Um, so we're, we're in the area. We're getting off the 110 here northbound. But that, again, that's just the reports that we got. I don't know where that information is coming from, if that was from LAPD or sorry, from City Fire Dispatch or if that was reports from 
um, somebody who witnessed this, you know, th there's there's not a, not a ton of info right now. So we're gonna just get ourselves over there, continue listening to uh, the communications that we can listen to, and then um, figure out uh, figure out what's going on. But we're, you know, it's it's not a good. Uh, not a good situation. What we're what we're rolling into, by any means. Another earthquake, 2.8, same location. So that's an aftershock, probably. So again, we're in earthquake mode while all of this is going on. And what earthquake mode is, for, at least for LA City Fire, uh, from my understanding, is that they are going to. Um, is they're going to take all of the apparatus out of uh, quarters. They're going to go around their district and they're going to look for any uh, infrastructural issues, gas main, water main breaks, um, any damage to buildings, anything like that. And they're going to check and make sure that uh, that their area looks good, basically, and make sure everything's OK. Um, so we're in that mode right now where everyone's kind of on edge about the earthquake. Um, and we're trying to find, uh, let me find that simplex channel so we can hear that. I think they're talking on Rampart simplex. There we go. So, okay, here we go. So, okay, now they're saying if they saw a pistol. Okay, is it going to be the, uh, the large uh, red apartment complex behind that one on the corner or is it the Let's front, see, uh, so the, right up, oh yeah, LAFD is here. Holy cow. Yeah. All right, so they're staged. Wow, okay. So fire department is here. There's two RAs, um, which is pretty uh, pretty serious. They're talking with the cops here. Um, you know what? Let, so they, it sounds like the pistol was presented to them. I don't think uh, they were shot at, which is good, because he just said... He just said we were, you know, if they ask him if they saw a pistol. So that kind of changes the uh, the dynamic here, which is good. It's a good thing, obviously. They just went in, it looks like a two or three, I want to say three story apartment complex. Um, pot, eh, it's hard to tell from here, maybe two. So two or three story apartment complex, it's on the uh, north side of the street. LAPD just uh, went in, guy in the front had the ballistic shield. Um, their objective now is to just get that guy into custody. Again, a situation like this is kind of bizarre. I, I think either, if I had to speculate, which we try not to here, um, I would say there's either drugs involved or some type of mental illness, maybe schizophrenia, something like that. And then uh, we don't know, again, if it's a real firearm or a replica firearm. And uh, LAFD in that moment, it's not their job to figure that out. It's somebody's pointing what looks like a gun at you, whether it was real or not, doesn't matter. They're going to treat it just like they're treating it very, uh, very seriously. So those guys are going up the stairs right now and they're going to make access to, or at least get to that unit where that individual was. And uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. We have a, uh, I think a detective showing up. Yeah, detectives are rolling up right now. What the hell? Did you hear that? Is that Gabe? Yeah, that's Gabriel. So they brought a uh, gurney, a uh, chairlift gurney, into the um, building, so... I hear somebody yelling. I think it might be our guy. So either he's in custody or or he shot himself or 
Yeah, that's pretty much the only two options. He's either in custody or he shot himself. That's pretty much it. And they did, uh, there was two paramedics that went up there, one with the uh, chair gurney uh, that's designed to go down chair, or chair, <laughs> stairs, sorry, the stair one. Um, and I do hear some, some yelling and stuff, so it might be, he might be in custody. And we're gonna find out. But I hear something, there's a lot of commotion. You know, uh, I'm glad everyone's okay. Um, I'm glad the firefighters are okay. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad he's okay, which I think okay in his world is probably a relative term. Um, so Tay was, <laughs> he's still yelling. I can hear him down the street. <laughs> so, um, and everybody's coming out laughing. They're going, what the hell? Um, so Tay was right. There was a mental illness component here. Um, if there was a firearm recovered, um, they're going to leave it up there. There are two detectives that showed up, so they're going to take that um, if, it, uh, if they even need to at this point. Who knows if it's real? I... <laughs> I'm glad we froze for that, though. That was pretty... Uh... <laughs> Again, uh, I love news because you can't make it up and every day is different. So let's put this back in uh, default settings and then we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be on, oh, there's a tow truck here. Maybe they think it's a car crash. Um, we're gonna uh, put the camera back into regular settings and then um, we're gonna be, we're gonna be out of here. By the way, this looks pretty decent. This is the, uh, the black magic that we've been using to shoot. Um, it's very cold, the tripod's very cold right now, so it's kind of hard to turn, but um, I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, if, I, if you ask about it, I will post a link um, to an article about this camera and yours truly and the Key News Network team um, that's using it. So when you see all the very clean, low light footage, that's where it's coming from. Um, that's it, that's, I, <laughs> I think that's it for this, for this episode. I don't know, <laughs> we could be blessed with another scene by, by Alex. I'm sorry, that guy's got me, uh, got me laughing. Um, sorry, woo, just woosah, woosah. So uh, we're done with this scene here in uh, LAPD's Rampart Division. Um, we'll see if Alex blesses us with another call, but if I had to guess, I think this is the last one of the night. We've had a pretty wild night uh, tonight, three fires and uh, whatever you want to call this guy. Uh, again, glad LAFD is safe, glad I can still hear him yelling, glad the cops are okay, and he's lucky to be alive, because if, uh, if he made a bad decision today, this would be a very different story. So um, that's it for this one. On to the next.